Hello everyone, I'm Roy Baker and welcome to another video on 3D visualization. Have you ever wanted to export your 3D studio scenes to another program and have them import like this, but they end up importing like this? Well, today we're going to take a look at how we can fix that and what is the root cause. But before we do that, don't forget to like those videos, subscribe to the channel, and click that notify bell. Let's figure out what's going on. So here you can see I've got a standard basic architectural scene inside of 3D Studio. And if we interrogate this scene, it's all about real world mapping coordinate systems and how some programs, when they receive FBX files or Datasmith files from 3D Studio, don't know how to interpolate those real world mapping systems. Now, if you're unfamiliar with real world mapping systems, there's a lot of wonderful tutorials out there. But in a nutshell, if we take a look at a material, a real world mapping system simply says the bitmap is determining the size of the repeat of the material on a particular object. So the objects themselves, walls, grass, people, whatever that object happens to be, they have a UVW modifier on them or baked in coordinate systems that tell them you use whatever the bitmap tells you to use. You do not determine what your mapping size should be. So in the case of this grass, we can see that the real world scale has been checked and the size is 4040. So if we were to go around this architectural scene, we would probably see there's probably hundreds of bitmaps in this scene, all using the real world scale. The beauty of real world scale is if you decide to change a bitmap. If I didn't like this grass, which is 40 by 40, and I wanted to apply a different grass, but it wanted to be 20 by 20, all I have to do is bring in the new bitmap and change the size. And immediately every object in the scene using that bitmap, no matter what 3D material it's in, will immediately update because of real world scale. But enough about real world, real world scale. What's the problem and how do we fix it? Now this scene is too big for me to go through and fix every single material. So I've got a little demo scene that I'm going to use. Simple little box. And let's take a look at the material on this box. Nothing fancy. It's just some type of a patchwork uh, bitmap. And you can see that it is also using real world scale at a repeat of 10 inches by 10 inches. So if we look at the box, and I'll move this over a little bit, a little too large for me. If we look at the box, you can see I've got a UVW map modifier and it says to use real world scale. Now let's export this and import it into a third party application. I'm going to use Twin Motion as my example because it's a good real time engine, but you could be using any other type of application because this isn't just for Twin Motion. This is for any kind of application where you want to bring FBX or Datasmith or other kind of exports out into those other third party applications. So let's go ahead and just do a file, export, export the whole scene. It's just a box. And I'm going to call this scene, uh, how about box real? For real world coordinate systems. And I'll use the UDatasmith or the Datasmith exporter. Go ahead and just hit OK. And let's just jump in the twin motion and let's import this file. Again, this isn't just for twin motion. I just want to emphasize this can be used for any other program. I've used lots of 3D applications and I can name several more uh, right off the top of my head that have the same import problem with real world coordinate systems. But let's just bring in the box that's got real world coordinate systems. And let's see what Datasmith does. Let's do a quick select and a focus. And you can see that's not right. That's a lot of repeats. It definitely did not honor the UVW scale that I had set in Max. Now imagine if it's this architectural scene, that would be a whole lot of problems of that thing coming over. And I'm actually gonna import that a little bit later in this tutorial so you can see how it's gonna be very problematic. So back to the box. So how are we going to fix that? Well, there's a manual way and then there's an easy way. With the box scene, let's just take a look at the manual way. But with the architectural scene, we're going to do it the easy way. So back in the box, in order to fix this, I need to go back to the bitmap shader and go back to the output and first un turn off or uncheck the real world scale. 
and set it to a tiling of one by one. Now, some people would say, well, why don't you just say, turn off the real world scale and just use tiling values? Well, the problem with that is a lot of importers, exporters from Macs, importers, in, they still don't pick up that. I, I have used some applications that assume all bitmaps in the bitmap shader are non-real world one by one, that they don't understand any kind of tiling in that bitmap shader at all. All, all right. Okay. And I won't, I won't name those programs, but you, if you're having those issues, this is probably going to fix it. So now I've got to get that back though. So I've got to take the UVW map modifier on every object in the scene and tell it what that mapping coordinate would be. And some of your objects may not have a modifier that may be baked. So now you got to go back and find every single one of them and apply a UVW modifier. So you kind of get my, the idea of how problematic this could be with that huge scene that I'm going to be going into. So here I'm going to fix this one manually. I'll turn off the real world scale and I'm going to now say the size is a fixed size of 10. I believe it was 10 by 10 by 10. And there you can see, okay, it's back to normal. Let's export it with Datasmith and bring it over to Twin Motion and let's see if it fixes it. So file, export, just export the whole scene. This time, instead of calling it box real, I'm going to call it box UVW for UVW um, mapping. Why not? So box UVW and hit save and hit OK. And let's go into twin. And I'm actually going to just keep this object. I'll just translate it out of the way. Let's just orbit down a little bit. And now let's bring in the other, and it's probably going to give me some kind of a message about you want to, you know, replace the material. I'm going to say you keep both materials. So let's go ahead and find the new one. So box UVW, hit OK, and we'll, let's keep both. And voila, you can see the new one imported in perfectly. So with this particular program and Datasmith, I was able to bring in the V-Ray materials, Ching, that's a good plus, but the UVW mapping has been fixed. Now, some of you twin motion users may say, well, why didn't you just use FBX? Yes, it's true that the FBX importer inside of Twin Motion and Datasmith importer in Unreal Engine, they don't have any issues. They know how to convert the real world mapping coordinate systems on the import. So you may may not need this, but I am using 3D Studio and V-Ray materials, and I want to go into Twin Motion, and I want Datasmith because FBX does not understand V-Ray materials. You've got to use Datasmith if you're an Unreal or Twin person. And Twin doesn't seem to understand those real-world coordinate systems, hence we've got to do this fix. Now, for a box, it's like, yeah, I could just change each material. It's just a box. What the heck? You know, it took me a few seconds. But let's go back to the architectural scene. So let's just do a new scene here in Twin, and we'll get this ready. And let's go back into Max. So here we are in Max. We, you can see that in this scene, there are hundreds of bitmaps in here. And I don't want to spend the days that it's going to take either converting them. Like I have a two choices. I can go to, actually, I don't have two choices. I was going to say convert them from, oh well, yeah, I do. I have two choices. I take that back. One choice would be to simply go to keep the V-Ray material, go to every single bitmap shader, figure out what its mapping size is, go to every object that's using that material and apply a real UVW modifier and change the bitmap to one-to-one. -to -one. That's one choice. The other choice is convert all your wonderful V-Ray materials over to say standard materials and use an FBX exporter. It happens to work for Twin Motion, but maybe it doesn't work for your application. So how am I going to very quickly modify all of these mapping coordinates to a sort of a, a unwrapped mapping value versus using real world mapping values? And I'm happy to say there is a script that will do this. You can find the link to this script down in the description below. But basically, the script is called UVW Tools. Now, I'm going to have to leave the material editor open, and you can see, look at this size, 40 by 40 in real world. Let me go ahead and open up the UV Tools. And in this latest release of UV Tools is the addition of bitmap to UV. And what this bitmap to UV will do is it will look for every Every object you select and the materials of those objects you have selected, it'll look for every single one and convert any real world mapping coordinate systems that it finds over to sort of 
unwrapped or smashed, if we want to call them, or baked mapping coordinate systems. And voila, the problem is fixed. So let me just show you how it works on, say, just the grass. And then we'll go over into twin motion and we'll take a look at the result of the entire scene. But we'll just do this on the grass just so you can see the net effect. If I do this to every object on the scene, which is what I typically would do is just grab everything, just select all, control A, um, I would simply click bitmap to UVW and wait a little while. And don't be surprised, the bigger the scene, it, the longer it's going to take. When I ran it on this particular scene, it took it around five minutes to convert it. So when you do use this, don't freak out if you think it, the system is crashing or locked up. So look at the task manager. You'll see Max is working. Be patient. The bigger the scene is, a, you know, this is a large one. There's a lot of materials here. So the bigger the scene, the longer it's going to take. It all depends on the hardware that you have, right? And how much geometry. So don't panic. It's going to do it. It doesn't crash. Okay, so here I'll just do it to the grass and we'll make it super fast. So let's go ahead and select it and click bitmap to UV. That was fast. And what you can see the tool does is it will apply an unwrap UV. It, I didn't have to apply it myself. It did it on its own. And if I look at the bitmaps, I can see already in the material editor that the real world scale has been unchecked and the tiling has been set to one to one. Now, if I was to do that to the entire scene, I could just go around and interrogate and we see that everything is fixed. So now what would I do? Do the whole scene, do a file and an export out to say Datasmith and see what the result is in Twin. And I've already done that, of course. I'm not going to torture you to sit here and watch a five minute conversion and then an export. So let's just jump right into Twin and let's look at the before UV tools and Datasmith and the after UV tools and Datasmith. So here we go. Let's do an import and I've got two files. So here the first one is Arch Real UVW. So this is V-Ray materials. I didn't convert them. They're using real world mapping systems and let's import this scene and let's see what we get. And it'll come in pretty quick. So I don't need to fast forward and you can see that it came in. And if I spin this around a little bit, that's good. Oh, we need to lower the starting grid. So let's lower this down. All right. And you can see that this is just not right. So let's zoom in on the grass. Oh, went right below it. And you can see that it is repeating wildly. I mean, like hundreds and hundreds of them. It That's not what it looked like inside of 3D Studio. Remember, look at 3D Studio here. Look at the mapping that we had right in here. Like, let's go inside this room here and you can see how the texture on this chair is laid out and on these cushions. Let's look and see what we've got in Twin. So let's zoom in here, jump right through the wall, and we can see that's not right. Um, it's repeating way too many. So Datasmith, in the case of Twin Motion, did not understand the real world mapping system. And you may see that in your program. So let's just blow this out, just start a brand new scene. And let's import in the same scene where I ran the UV tools first. So file, oh, I'll just use the import down here. Open. And here we go. I called it the unwrapped architectural scene. Here comes the data. Let's lower, I'm already excited. I'm going to lower the scene graph because the dirt's too high. Oh it's, oh, it's the same. Nope, yeah, it's too high. It's like we've got sand in the grass. Let's just take this and lower it down. And voila, you can see it imported perfectly. The mapping coordinates are fixed. Datasmith is happy. We can even see the wood repeat here on the exterior of the building. If we go inside, we're going to see those chairs, the carpet, the wood is repeating just like it did inside of 3D Studio. All right? Everything is happy. Everything has been tiled properly. Even the columns are correct. And that is all it takes. So you download the UVW tool script, go to the description, you'll find the link there. Um, it's a wonderful script that you can use. Um, I, I purchased this script and I absolutely love it. It is well worth the 
uh, the cost of being able to do automation. Now, if you don't want to purchase the script, sure, you can go through manually and spend a couple days of your time trying to fix all of those or abandon your V-Ray materials and switch them over to, say, standard and use other importer exporters, and that still might not work. So I highly suggest that you grab this script. And I hope this video solves a lot of problems that you have. And I'm Roy Baker. And don't forget to like those videos, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notify bell. And leave me any comments below if you have any issues or other questions. And we'll see you later.